I actually have it split up on my website on, uh, for photography for two different sections. One which I deem to be, uh, I believe to be authentic, real representations of what could be ghosts. And the other section which I believe to be either fakes or natural explanations. And there are a lot of things that can be naturally explained away from, again, uh, dust particles, orbs, from people photographing their own camera straps, uh, sunlight hitting the lens, uh, double exposure, um, you know, bad film, bad photography, movement of the camera. Um, and I've seen just so many thousands of photographs. Some pictures uh, do seem to represent much more. Uh, in other words, they do look like a shape of a person or a shadow or um, something that is not uh, easily explained away. And those are the ones that really require much more examination. I really do believe that um, cameras and video can in fact capture images of the dead and it's because of um, you often hear about well I didn't see it but the camera caught it and you got to remember cameras are snapping pictures with uh, you know, if you're using like film you're using 1000 ASA you're using very fast shutter speeds uh, using shutter speeds faster than the human eye can blink. So within a blink of an eye, faster than we can blink, there's something there that our eyes and our brain is just there for that fraction of a second. It's not there long enough for our eyes to see it, our brain to analyze it mm -hmm. as an image. But yet the camera, because it can freeze that fraction of a second, that moment of time in a, in a picture, captures that image and that's the only reason it sees it and we don't because it can freeze that and we can't. Mm -hmm. We're a motion picture. We, we capture things in video where the still camera captures the stills and even digital cameras can take digital flaws. Uh, in other words, uh, pixels that don't properly fill in on digital pictures that look like rounds orbs and they're simply digital flaws. Um, I'm not going to say that every orb is explainable, but a lot of them can be explained away naturally. So um, you really got to be careful and the best rule of thumb is just, just be aware of the environment of where you're taking the picture. Is it dusty? Is it humid? Is it outdoors? Is it rainy? Whatever. And if you get something, then you'll be able to maybe say, okay, I was in a very dusty condition, that's probably dust. Or I was outside, it's probably bugs. Just be aware of where you're taking the picture at. Uh, EMF, um, very, very strong EMF fields um, can cause hallucinations, uh, you know, headaches, even they say skin irritations. Uh, and that's what these devices, some of these, these devices were initially built for is showing people the dangers of high EMF fields and how to reduce them in your home uh, and not for ghost hunting. Yeah. Um, but people that often experience high EMF uh, feel as though they have a, that they're paranoid, they have a paranoia feeling, feeling or that they have a skin irritation or that they have headaches and they might think they're experiencing a ghost but they're actually experiencing a high EMF field caused by a natural source in the building, like a fuse box or something like that that's kicking out a lot of that. And as they get away from that to another part of the building, they feel fine. When they go back to that source, they feel that again. Uh, so it's easy to trace down uh, using that uh, other devices that that is the source of the high EMF you know, the power box, the power source, and not the ghost. If the case sounds interesting, um, and again, I've interviewed enough people uh, throughout the years when I can tell if people are, are embellishing or sensationalizing your story, and I've not quite run across that as far as I, I think of people trying to fake a story or to put on, you know, uh, mm -hmm. a fake. So, um, what we get there sometimes things just don't happen, but that's not uncommon. Sometimes the ghost is just not active when we're there.